In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Usually we coast along about 20 miles per hour, but today, in this moment, I would like us to go about 80 miles per hour and a little bold as we consider this theme of devotion to the Blessed Virgin. Let us let it all hang out. Let it loose. And let the dear Blessed Mother reveal herself to us. Let her take us into her mantle into the folds of her garments. And may she protect us. And may she give us a superabundance of God's grace. And the title of this brief talk will be The Effects of the Marian Devotion. And I'm basing myself on our whole heritage of the Western civilization from the Greco-Roman philosophy, which met its apex in medieval scholasticism, guided by St. Thomas Aquinas, the great angelic doctor of the Catholic Church. And that is the doctrine about cause and effect. It's just as simple as this. You walk into a room, you flip a switch, and then voila, as we say in French, you have light. Uh, you turn on the stove, you, you push the little button or the, or, or the knob, and voila, you have a little flame coming out of your, your oven. So there's always a cause and effect and of course, there's different levels of causes. There's the, pre, the, the first cause, the secondary causes. There's all kinds of causes that bring about all kinds of effects that we see. The first cause being God himself. That God wishes us to be, and therefore we come into being, right? He's pushing everything through. But he uses all kinds of secondary causes, circumstances, things that we see, things that we are able to touch to bring about certain effects or results. And so when we're approaching this theme here about the Blessed Virgin, we want to take this same philosophy and apply it to this because there are things that will become evident if we you and I are devoted to the Blessed Virgin. If you and I are truly, objectively devoted to the Blessed Virgin Mary, there are certain things that will happen and may even make you afraid if you're not full of faith. And so I would like to kind of take away some of those prejudices, some of those those inadequacies, those little hesitations and not knowing where we're going and not knowing what's happening to us if we belong to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so, put on your seatbelts. You know, in the next few minutes, we will discover some very challenging realities, but also extremely consoling. And so we come in this month of the Sacred Heart of Christ to ask so that we can increase our devotion to his mother and so that we can feel the effects within us. I would like to offer up this talk for the health issues of one of our deacons of this parish. And so we asked our Lord to grant him graces. I'm going to take these points, so if you have anything against what I'm going to say, (laughs) then you have to take it up with St. Louis de Montfort, chapter 6 of the true devotion to the Blessed Virgin. So I'm just going to give you exactly what he says without holding anything back, 
so that we could become aware of this beautiful doctrine and apply it to our lives. Now, the effects of being devoted to Mary are so awesome. It's almost like a little girl who goes into her mom's closet and puts on her clothes and her shoes so she feels like overwhelmed by these massive shoes <laughs> and these massive clothes. And that's what happens when we are devoted to the Blessed Virgin. She gives us herself in such an abundance that we don't know what to do with it. The excess, the size, the magnitude, the greatness. And so we need to chew it little by little, right? So that awkwardness could ha perhaps happen to us. There are seven effects when we find ourselves truly devoted to the Blessed Virgin. Seven things will happen to us. The first thing, when we're truly devoted to the Blessed Virgin, knowledge, listen to that, knowledge of our unworthiness becomes apparent to us. The whole sense of of the horrors of sin smack us right in the face and all of our inadequacies by ourselves alone. And that's the key. We are absolutely nothing without God. We can do nothing. And the soul becomes so connected with this idea that it has no other idea that starts to occupy the brains and the mind and the soul. You'll perceive the evil inclinations that your fallen in nature affords you. You'll be totally convinced that you'll be incapable of any good apart from God's grace. And separated from God, the author of nature and the author of grace, you'll hope only in vain. Don't the words of our Lord Himself reverberate? What does it gain a man to gain the whole world? What does it profit his soul if he gains the entire world, but yet at the end loses his immortal soul? Everything becomes insipidly in vain apart from God. And we're not just talking about a God out there that half genuflects to Buddha and half genuflects to the deists and the agnostic God and the generic God. But we're talking about the most holy and blessed Holy Trinity, fully present in heaven and upon earth only through, only through His holy Catholic and apostolic church that we can discover Him through Christ. Now this is a mouthful because if we are devoted to the Blessed Virgin, this is what's going to happen, the first effect. Because truth just becomes so radically apparent. It's so obvious. And the problem with the human nature, especially the fallen man, is that we are like these little bats, you know, that fly around. And in the presence of the great sun, the, the, you know, the little creatures just start, you know, they start uh, straining their eyes. They start to shrink away. They start searching for, for caves and black holes and darknesses. They can't just enjoy the apparent Hawaiian sun that you and I enjoy. <laughs> it's just too much for them. It overwhelms them. And so many in the hierarchy of the Catholic Church are like this today. They don't have a devotion to the Blessed Virgin. That's why you see all kinds of crazy stunts and, 
and partial truths being flung everywhere and souls being damned because of bad judgment and bad counsel and bad advice. It's all because they have absolutely no devotion to the Blessed Virgin. They might give lip service, they might give you the impression that they're devoted to the Blessed Virgin. But at the end of the day, as our Lord says, you will judge them by their fruits. And if there is a real, substantial connection with the Blessed Virgin where you give your whole mind, heart, and soul to the Blessed Virgin, there will be none of these shenanigans happening within logic and within speech and within decisions and within government and within all kinds of things. The Blessed Virgin will come there and she will order everything perfectly because that's her mission. Genesis 3.15 When man fell, God promised to send the Redeemer through the woman. And the Dewey Reams Bible says that she herself will be crushing the head of Satan at the end of the ages, in the fullness of time, as St. Paul would say. So that is the first effect. St. Louis de Montfort goes on, you will even despise yourself and mistrust yourself in all things, in your speech and your action and the like. You'll feel yourself, and you have to love this Frenchman, he gets very graphic. You'll feel yourself as a snail, always staining things all over the place as you, as you kind, of, kind of slither on in, on the ground in your small pace by your own efforts leaving all kinds of stains of slime if you're by yourself, if you're doing everything only by yourself. You'll feel the toad that poisons all that it touches. You'll feel as evil as an evil serpent that seeks to deceive. That's what we are without God. And she'll share. This, this is the, the punchline of this point. The Blessed Virgin will share her humility. Remember that, the sun and the bat stuff? <laughs> it went, whoa, it's like too much for me. You know, let, let, oh, let, let up a little bit. Let up a little bit. <laughs> As the Blessed Virgin gives you a super dosage of her humility, eating humble pie. That's... That's tough. Uh, But she gives it so intensely that you will seek nothing but embarrassments and to be rejected by others on every step of the way to identify with Christ out of pure love. Here there's no human respect. Human respect will disappear you'll be ready to go down to the trials and to the jailhouses and you'll suffer. Now all of this needs to be communicated by wisdom, not just by our own efforts. Even this, we can't even venture out by our own efforts. Oh yeah, I can handle this. I'm going to be a little boxer, go out there and get beat up. (laughs) But all of this, the Blessed Virgin will reveal to you. It's not a forced knowledge. It's not something I fudge by myself. It's like it's totally natural and flows when there's the connection with the most august of virgins, the Blessed Virgin. When we love her deeply and intensely, when we dedicate our our hours to her, our heart to her, our sorrows to her, we constantly trust and come back and trust more and more and more, never getting, getting enough So, and believe me, without this first effect, all the other ones will be obsolete and will not come. Just like that, how any structure, you know, you and I avoided the the storm last night, you know, by having a little structure. But in order to keep that structure up, you needed that little concrete slab on the ground that you didn't even notice last night. You need the little slab, boring little thing, but strong as concrete, And that'll be this first point, a great sense of our unworthiness and substantial humility. Without that, the four walls, any four walls cannot stand for long. 
that will have to come tumbling down. And so the second effect, when we belong to the Blessed Virgin, listen to this, we will begin to share in the very faith of the Blessed Virgin. We will borrow her faith. <laughs> and that is a scary thing because it's pre-medieval. <laughs> so, and, and nobody likes anything medieval. Nobody likes anything that's ancient, uh, black and white, uh, full-throttled, uh, too fanatical things. But the Blessed Virgin's faith, the faith that surpasses all of the, of the patriarchs and all the prophets of the Old Testament, as the Catechism, Revised Catechism of the Catholic Church, 1993, speaks about the faith of Mary that surpasses that of Abraham. Could you imagine surpassing the faith of Abraham, who was called out of his country at almost 100 years old to go and wander about somewhere? He had no clue where he was going. From the present-day Iraq in the land of Ur's, All he had to do was take all his cattle and his family and everything and just, just march to nowhere. And he kept walking and he kept walking and he kept walking. He said, I have a little arthritis here. I have to take my bromelain. <laughs> but he just kept walking and kept walking because some sort of an idea got in his head. He didn't even see the God who spoke to him. And then he goes and then God says, out of your very body, I will pull out descendants as number the stars. And then a week later or whatever, the angel comes and says, go kill your only son you got, Isaac. And the book of Hebrews says that he had so much faith that he believed with his entire heart that Isaac was going to come out of the tomb to make all those descendants as numerous as the stars as, as the Lord had promised him. He absolutely was convinced that he would kill his son and then the son would be barging out of the tomb. That's how much faith Abraham. So that's like peanuts and fighting with a, 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 a butter knife compared to the great arsenal of the Blessed Virgin's faith when she was on this earth. And St. Louis de Montfort says that she now reigns in heaven and she no longer has this faith. But as she goes to heaven, she did not lose her faith, even though she doesn't exercise it anymore. Because now she's reigning as queen over all of heaven and earth. She doesn't need faith anymore, but she still has it. Every nuance of that faith that she carried around for the 72 to 80 years that she lived on this life, when she, when she passed from this life to the next, body and soul, into heaven in Ephesus. She has that faith that nobody believes in today, or only conditionally, way too radical. <laughs> This faith of the Blessed Virgin that just completely trusted not one single, not even a paper mache fence that became between in that faith and God. Total and absolute abandonment at the total expense. Watching her divine son hang on that cross for 10,800 seconds on the gibbet of the cross gagging in his own pus of his swollen lungs. And the Blessed Virgin was looking at that and she pierced everything through it all and was just seeing God, God, God's work, God's glory. This stuff is so un, unusual. And she will have that faith he who, she who did not lose her faith, even though she went up to heaven, she has it on her side right there, ready to administer. The more, Saint, says St. Louis de Montfort, the more a member of church militant grows in trust of Mary, gains this friendship of this most noble of queen, automatically that faith will rivet that soul. Just peg away, boom, 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 boom. 
She would throw everything of her faith at that soul. The sun and the bat. <laughs> Please leave me alone. Leave me alone. It's too much. It's overwhelming. And when this faith rivets the soul, what are the results? The soul will start reacting in the following ways. Note this well. It'll start, watch this. This is counter modern. <laughs> It'll depend less on emotions and feelings. Emotions and feelings will be wiped away. They will not even count as an argument. They would just, that's what faith does. Faith bolds, plows right through all feelings and emotions and first reactions and gut feelings and fears and all kinds of psychosomatic realities that we have, you know, the mind connected with the body stuff that reacts and knee jerks. All that stuff will be nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. This is what this faith will do when it's riveting the soul of the church militant member that trusts in Mary. Faith will be so operative by love, all actions will become an act of heroic love. All action. Because remember, it's the faith of the Blessed Virgin. So what comes from the mind and trickles into the heart, everything will be triggered, triggered with that pure water of faith. Be flowing right through the veins of action. That's great news. It'll take on the feature of rock solid and uncompromising, says St. Louis de Montfort. Uncompromising. Testing faith that is achieved, it achieves access to the most sublime mysteries of Christ. In your contemplations and your prayers, you will have access to the incarnation. You will have access to the realities of of the resurrection of Christ, the glorious ascension, his current status on the right hand of the Heavenly Father and all his kingship and glory, you will have access to all of that sublime mystery. Another result of this faith that's being enacted and placed into your soul by Mary lodges one into the final destiny of life. All the eternal truths will be so um, savoring that they will be totally convincing your whole existence. The reality is about the shortness of life, the, the longness of eternity, the, the, the weight balance between right and wrong and judgment, all what that means when we go into the next life, when we face the judge, all the eternal truths we fully, fully understood, even in this life. The soul be so trained in all those realities. And then, this faith, if you thought that was enough, poor bat, he wants to go <laughs> running to the cave. If you thought that was enough, then there'll be a voracious courage that will overwhelm the soul. A tremendous courage, not to be understood with... Uh, just stubborn, step on everybody's toes, ugliness, but with a great finesse, like it was very typical to the Blessed Virgin, always very delicate and soft, but the soul becomes extremely courageous and bold in all its endeavors and in all of its activities. And so the soul will set out with this courage confidently on any feet, and any challenge without hesitations, albeit, and this is the great doctrine of St. Saint, Saint Louis de Montfort, even great things for God. We'll go out to do great, heroic things for God that will have great repercussions for the future, for vast segments of the society. There'll be, there'll be greatness, not just with the little stuff. Just think of St. Therese de Lisieux. She said that she became the, the, the missionary, the patroness of all missions, right? And the most heroic thing that she did throughout her entire adult life was to clean a doorknob <laughs> with a little rag. That was the most heroic thing she ever did. 
and yet she's proclaimed by the church as patroness of all the, the great repercussions she caused through her holiness and her great courage of soul. All of these things the Blessed Virgin will reveal if we're truly devoted to the Blessed Virgin without holding any stops. And then this faith that the Blessed Virgin places within you will be a torch by which you will see all things and a powerful weapon, listen to this, to set ablaze the faint-hearted around you. You will be able to, to just... To, to swipe them all up and to snatch them all up in this, in, this, in this logic of God and holiness. You're pulling them out of their lethargic lukewarmness. Uh, this will be the weight of your example that the faith will, will, will set off in you. And souls around you will become fervent and they will love God as well. And then this faith has the capacity, says St. Louis de Moffat, to, to, to convince the most petrified, stony hearts imaginable by simple and easy arguments. All you have to do is just go there and say you one, two, three of the Baltimore Catechism, and they'll be bowled over. <laughs> the most hardened of sinners, right? Because you will have the faith of the Blessed Virgin with you. He even says that even life will be restored to those dead by sin. They'll be resurrected, so to speak. And lastly, this faith of the Blessed Virgin will enable you to resist any and all temptations from the devil and the other enemies of salvation. You'll be able to be staunchly resisting them all. So that is the second effect of devotion to the Blessed Virgin. The third effect is the gift of pure love. So we just talked about the mind, what will happen to your mind. Now we're going to talk about what's going to happen to your heart. In this gift of pure love, she'll give you the gift of pure love. So he says the first thing that will happen to you is that you will be able to get rid of all scruples and all fears will dissipate. <laughs> you know, it will be like the biblical scene of you know, Daniel being lowered to the lions and the lions, you know, he just starts yawning and the lions start yawning as well. It will be like this type of a thing where the Blessed Mother's heart will, will inflame you so much that all the fears and hesitancies, they'll all disappear like a clunk of ice before a big sunshine. And then the second thing she'll start to do is to pry open. She'll start to, to get the wedge in there inside the heart and she'll start to pull until it starts opening up and then the heart will be enlarged. Will be enlarged where there'll be no excuses, there'll be no loss of time over sterile lamentations, there'll be no depressions, or if nature gives you a little few depressing uh, uh, little splurts, you'll be able to adjust. The, the heart will be constantly enlarging, not through pills, uh, but through grace. And why will she do this? So that the devoted child can obey God and all his commandments and all of his providential permissions and tolerations. Wow, that's so taxing. You know, I'm even tired already of thinking about it, of what this will mean. Even to obey Father Allen to support your parish. And if your pastor, if he's going to be asking you to receive communion as a divorce and remarried Catholic, but then don't obey. But if he's asking anything um, that is according to legitimate government within the church, then there should be support and there should be obedience. 
because God will bless it. And they have to be support of your parish to support the projects, support the financial burdens and so forth. And the Blessed Mother would just keep prying and open. And I don't know, I have this, this chip on my shoulder. I don't know, the parish back in 82 when the pastor deceived us and used the money for something that was not mentioned or something like that. Now I have a big chip on my shoulder. You know, and the Blessed Mother, she's constantly prying open. <laughs> open up. So the dinner is trying to go to the little kid who doesn't want to open his mouth, you know, open, open, <laughs> until finally it opens up. Yeah. The Blessed Virgin, she would do this. And there will be obedience with a certain spirit, that of alacrity. Alacrity. The Blessed Mother will smoothen things so much that there will be a certain ease and control of, of all the emotional and all the lower faculties. There will be a con complete control because there will be the oasis of God's presence. Philippians, Philippians chapter 2 that he was in the form of God that then did not demand the forms of God something to be grasped at but rather he emptied himself and became a slave for us. And accepting obedience for us even to the point of death, death on the cross. So the Blessed Virgin will train us for that, our type of hearts. And there'll be a holy freedom of God's children. And she will fill the heart with such pure love, and she'll be a treasure of that love in your heart. And then, results of that, when she becomes the treasurer of your heart, then you will act in pure love and not in servile fear. You'll look upon God the Father and strive to please Him at all times. When you speak to God, it'll always be an utter of trust. No matter what the circumstances, no matter what the feelings may be. If you have the misfortune of sinning, says St. Louis de Montfort, then you will immediately abase yourself. Remember the first, the first effect? You'll humble yourself profoundly. You experience deep sorrow and contrition. And you will lovingly rise again from your sin, buoyed up with the holy hope, and you will continue on your way. This is the power of the pure love that the Blessed Virgin grants to those who are devoted to to her. Then the fourth effect. There will be great confidence in God and the Blessed Virgin. So the Blessed Virgin will fill your soul so much with unbounded confidence in her and in God. The soul that has worked so hard and in exchange takes place these following things. So this is the holy exchange of Trusting, getting beat up, and trusting. And then this is how you'll be rewarded. You'll start to approach Jesus only through Mary. Even though you might not even be thinking about Mary at the second. Everything will be, everything will be going through Mary, to the Blessed Virgin, to Christ. All the merits... And all the graces won, all the satisfactions that we gain through those hundreds of masses and all those penances that we do and all those fastings that we do, um, they will be all given over to her. <laughs> you know, you say, well, well, wait a minute, that was my $100 bill. No, no, it's all in the hands of Mary. <laughs> oh, that little sacrifice, I really want to hang on to that because that was my little consolation and stuff. No, everything would be completely lost in Mary. Remember St. Louis de Montfort says, we are like this little pebble amidst a great overwhelming ocean. That's how we are in the hands of the Blessed Virgin. We're just completely engulfed, right? Nothing's ours anymore, not even our merits, not even our satisfactions. If you think this is odd, this comes straight from St. Bonaventure. The phrase... And this is the famous thing about St. Louis de Montfort. You might not know this. This has come from straight from St. Bonaventure, quoted by St. Louis. Totus tuus. This is where it comes from. 
from St. Bonaventure is now yours, everything is yours in regard to Mary. Having done, and then you start to physically do exactly what St. John did at the foot of the cross, beholding the mother that Christ commanded you to behold. You behold the Blessed Mother, all things in obedience to Christ on the cross. And so these things will happen when you have a full and total confidence in the Blessed Virgin, but the Blessed Virgin Mary is never outdone in generosity. She will be a very generous mother and queen. And she will clothe us with her own merits and virtues. And so we will be so shining in the presence of God. We'll be like this little piece of slime, but we'll be encased in gold pearls and rubies and emeralds before God. God will be like being mistaken everything, thinking that we're her. And so now you'll be able to, to say to God confidently and not as a hypocrite, but even though we might be still hypocrites, but if we're balking it out, it'll be mistaken as sincere and true. We'll be saying, Behold, Mary, thy handmaid, be it done unto me according to thy word. So, God, so that God may treat you as if you were Mary herself. So this trust will burningly increase the more you give yourself over to Mary. And all you possess and everything that you use or keep as she pleases. The more this happens, the less trust will be placed in your own sinful self and more in her. Now the fifth effect. There will be a communication of the spirit of Mary. Now this, I have to admit, will be absolutely rejected by the modern philosophies of today. Totally and absolutely contentious to mainstream um, way of thinking. It only it almost be a scandal. Because the modern mindset is be yourself. Do whatever you wish. Have liberty, fraternity, and equality. Versus the submission of all things to Christ the King in his mystical body that should dominate all of the visible realities of the universe in his holy Catholic and apostolic church. So if you are faithful to the practices of the true devotion to the Blessed Virgin, and this is why it will become contentious, because the very soul, so remember before we were talking about the faith of Mary will be given to you, and you will have the faith of Mary, now the very soul of the Blessed Virgin will be living in you. The very soul of the Blessed Virgin. This is absolutely remarkable. And her spirit will take place inside of you. Why? In order to rejoice in God and glorify Him. And this is a quote straight from St. Ambrose. So this is not something that St. Louis pulled out of his sleeve. He's quoting St. Ambrose. May the soul of Mary be in each one of us to glorify the Lord. May the spirit of Mary be in each one of us to rejoice in God. So the very soul will be inside of us. There will be such a connection that the soul of Mary will be acting in us. Now when will this occur? St. Louis de Montfort asks, when Mary is enthroned as queen in your heart. See, this enthronement, that's why these modern politicians and all this modern culture and lifestyle and mainstream, even mainstream Catholicism will not accept this because it's not politically correct. Once things are submitted to the blessed, like slaves, Submitted to the Blessed Virgin, this is when this will occur. When Mary subjects them to the sweet yoke of her son's kingship. 
When your soul, listen, I love this image. When your soul starts to breathe Mary, could you imagine breathe, like breathing air? Then you're breathing Mary. Like it becomes so total of an action, a gimme, and so vital. This is when this will happen. When this comes, he says, watch out, because you see St. Louis is talking, because he's coming out of the French Revolution when everything was going wild. And so he says, when this happens, great things will happen upon the earth. When we have enough souls that will give them, like as if they were, when they breathe, they'll be breathing in Mary. When that happens, when we get to that degree, and as many as people as possible start to do that, then will the great things start to be unleashed upon the earth of God's action. When this happens, he says, the Holy Ghost will find his great spouse, meaning the Blessed Mother, in you. He will find the spouse in you. That's why on Pentecost, the Blessed Virgin had to be in the cynical. So when the, Blessed, when the Holy Ghost came, he had to unleash everything upon where Mary was, seated, his great spouse. That's why St. Luke had to put her in there in the Acts of the Apostles. So when this happens, when we start to breathe Mary, we start to lose ourselves totally after many years, the Holy Ghost will find his great spouse, Blessed Mary, in you, and he will come to you with great power. And there'll be great things happening on the earth. He was like anxious for this to happen. You could tell when he was writing this chapter 6. It's like, he was like, let it happen already. Let it, let it break loose. And he says, there'll be such a massive dose, dosage of the gifts of the Holy Ghost poured upon where Mary is that it will be granted to you especially the gift of wisdom. It will be totally and absolutely dumped upon your soul. When this age of Mary dawns upon us, St. Louis says, when will it happen? He asks nostalgically. When many souls chosen by her will hide in the depths of her soul. That's when it's going to happen. When they become living copies of her. And mind you, uh, St. Louis de Montfort did not have that term clone, <laughs> but that's what he's talking about. here. When you become a clone of Mary, <laughs> that's when these great things will occur. It will only occur, finally, he says, when this true devotion is lived seriously with all its consequences and rigorously put into true practice, not fibbing, not halfways, but when it's in full throttle, that's when it's going to happen. And then the sixth effect that will happen for those who are devoted to the Blessed Virgin is transformation into the likeness of Christ. St. Louis de Montfort says that the Blessed Virgin is like a tree in the soul. So in our souls, she acts like a tree, bearing abundant fruits in our souls. And what is this fruit? Is it getting along with all our brethren of humanity? <laughs> no. Is it to grow pears and cucumbers and bananas? No. <laughs> what is this fruit? Jesus, Jesus. Jesus and more Jesus. Everything that comes out of the tree is caked with Jesus. Every, the real Catholic Jesus, the unchanging Jesus. St. Paul says the same yesterday, today, and forever. That same Christ. This is the only fruit that comes. And many searching for Jesus hard and wide, but by their own efforts, 
have to say with Peter, says St. Louis and Luke 5, 5, we have caught nothing. Those who scramble around in all these different devotions and all this human effort and all of this whatever. But just go to Mary and it'll just be bloop. It'll be right there. It'll just, everything that you worked for for 25 years will be just happen in, in seconds through the Blessed Virgin. In due time, uh, it'll bear fruit. As the prophet Haggai says in chapter 1, verse 6, you have worked hard and gained so little. <laughs> without, without Mary, there'll be like this endless rowing. You, could you imagine, okay, let's row across uh, Lake Pontchartrain, you know, and you're just going around in a circle in 10 yards <laughs> for two days. Boy, this is really something else. <laughs> when will we ever arrive? <laughs> and all of a sudden, oh, wait, stupid, we're going around in circles. <laughs> With Mary, you go straight, straight. She'll pick you up and bring you to places you have no clue that you never dreamed of or imagined through the Blessed Virgin, through Mary, through that simple giving to Mary, a simple loving of the Blessed Virgin, giving yourself totally to her. Don't worry about the Protestants. Oh, you think too much of Mary. Forget all that baloney. This is the truth. Only the Mary was chosen so that Christ can come to us. Remember St. Alphonsus Liguori? The very back that the Lord gave to those Romans was given by the Blessed Virgin. That very wrist that was thrown upon that cross so that the Romans can see and nail upon was actually given through the Blessed Virgin. It was given through the Blessed Virgin in the most radical of senses. It was only through the Blessed Virgin that we get anything physical of our Lord Jesus or anything about Him. It's only in thoroughly communicated through that glorious womb. That's only how they all came to us. And so that's how we're only to go back to her, to him, is through her. In Mary, though, he says, you will walk in the light. You will work in a holy place. And there will be almost little self-effort spent. There will be great strides done with absolutely only, hardly any efforts. She is a sort of holy of holies in which the saints are forged and transformed before everybody's eyes. And this here is a masterpiece of St. Louis de Montfort's doctrine the various ways to be sculpted. Remember that? He says there's two ways to bring about a great sculpture of art. The first way could be the little, the little uh, artist with his little hammer in one hand and his chisel in the other hand. And there he goes so minutely and so carefully and so scholarly walking around and... and bending over each, each way and chipping one little thing here and then go study something for five hours and come back and chip another, you know, chip, 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 and then until finally something's broken <laughs> that's not perfect, right? <laughs> so that's one way of sculpting. He says, forget all that. <laughs> forget it. Just get a mold, a cast. Just get a mold. Cheat. <laughs> And just throw yourself into the mold. Totally throw yourself into the mold. Uh, and you'll cheat and you have a perfect statue coming out. You know, just so effortlessly. You just cheat, you know. Just grab a mold, put it there, fill it up with the stuff, and come out with a, with a, a, a pieta, right? Uh, something that's breathtaking, a masterpiece. Look at that, even the sunshine is coming out telling these things. Look at out there, we're supposed to have this storm, right? The Blessed Mother is saying, hey. 
Maybe she's saying that from OLPS. Hey, <laughs> but don't worry, she's here. So This is the masterpiece. Using a mold. Uh, and then you say, well, where did this come from? This is one of the m trademarks of his teaching of St. Louis de Montfort, but it came from St. Augustine. St. Augustine used this analogy. Thou art to be worthy to be called the mold of God. If the Blessed Mother chooses you through your devotion to her, you become a mold of God, right? So easy. Just have that little thing all fixed up and just throw your stuff in there and voila, as the French say. Whoever is cast into this mold, Mary, and then Jesus is quickly etched out in him. And then he says, but be careful, this is not just a romantic idea. In order to put something into the mold, what's going to happen? The substance, substance needs to be liquefied, and that is crushing. Right? It's like crushing grapes for our mass, right? or crushing the wheat to use for mass. So we need to give those all that, that such suffering, right? And we just give it over, and that's what's going to go into the mold. So let's not be too romantic about that easy cheat sheet. Uh, it's going to involve just the flowing of our normal sufferings that's going to come anyway. And that's what we have to give to the Blessed Mother. So it means to be crushed, he says, crushing the old Adam so as to acquire the new Adam. Okay, and lastly, but not leastly, because I've been talking too much and perhaps way too much, the greater glory of Christ will be the last effect of true devotion to the Blessed Virgin. If you live this true devotion to Mary, he says, you'll give more glory to Jesus in one month's time Versus many years of demanding devotions and non-ending devotions. And he says, why? Since you do all things in and through Mary, consciously or not, but, but totally convincingly and consecratedly, you will naturally lay aside your own intentions no matter how good they may appear to you. You will abandon yourself to her intentions, even though you don't know what they are. Mary's intentions will be yours. And thus you will live off the high quality of her intentions. And this may shock you. Get ready for this. Or you're holding on to your seat. <laughs> this, this kind of shock. I know it's true, but it just shocks you when you, when you read it. You almost try to feel St. Uh, Louis's temperature <laughs> on his head, you know. <laughs> Say, are you okay, St. Louis? Uh, he, listen to this, what he says. He says, the intentions are so pure in Mary that the purest at all, that her making one stitch in a sewing project would bring about more glory than the entire martyrdom St. Lawrence when he's on the gridiron roasting all of his flesh. And not there, he says, and all the martyrdoms of all the Christian martyrs throughout the entire history of Christianity, all put together, that one stitch of the Blessed Virgin that she did was so much more pleasing to God, so much greater in quality than all of the efforts of the entire martyrs put together, throwing themselves to the lions, throwing themselves to the bonfires, throwing themselves into whatever types of martyrdoms we find in the entire martyrology and beyond. I don't know about you, but that is absolutely consoling, but extremely shocking. And that's, when we are devoted to the Blessed Virgin, we have access to that meditorious stitch of the sewing project. No matter what we do, 
We have access to that action of the Blessed Virgin, that intentionality. That's why we should just let go of all of our intentions. This doesn't mean that we don't pray for people and we don't make special intentions as we go through our fastings and our masses that we do or whatever, or our intentions of our rosaries, that we have our own intentions. But we do all those intentions, but then much more ontologically, we just we just throw them all over to the Blessed Virgin so that she worries about them, so that she has them, and then we possess her intentions. And so what a great exchange. Uh, so this is the great mystery of that. We give greater glory to Christ this way. This is what will happen. And we don't even have to psychologically understand that this is happening. We just know it occurs. And she thus amassed such a multitude of graces, but at one stitch, that it would be easier to count all the stars in the whole universe than to count her merits with that one stitch. It would be easier to count all the drops of the entire ocean than it would be to, to, to count the merits wrought about by one stitch of the Blessed Virgin. It will be easier to count all the sands of the seashore, of all the shores in the entire world, than to count the infinite merits of the Blessed Virgin with one stitch. When a soul abandons itself to the Blessed Virgin, Mary cannot but work great marvels in that soul and in the soul. Mary loves you, and she gives all to you. She has an eagerness to impart a special beauty and a special splendor to the little gifts that we place in her virginal hands and the sufferings and the betrayals that we suffer and the confusions that we endure, that we give them over to her virginal hands. She gives them most willingly to Jesus for us. Our guilty hands, says St. Louis de Maffren, can never think to offer like this way Mary does for us. Our guilty hands are so insufficient. Now watch this. Look at these little play on words that I love so much. You can reflect on this for a long time. Listen to the words of St. Louis de Montfort. You never think of Mary without Mary thinking of God for you. So every time you think of the Blessed Virgin, the Blessed Virgin herself is thinking about you uh, for you to God. That's powerful. This is another phrase. Listen to this. You never praise and honor the Blessed Virgin without her joining you in honoring and praising God. And then, this one here also gets you goat. She is an echo of God, only saying God. Listen to this. If you say Mary, she says God. And if you think this is non-scriptural, it comes straight from St. Luke's Gospel when, they, when Elizabeth, her cousin, praised Mary, she responded with the Magnificat. So that's how it's taking place. Well, anyway, uh, I hope I didn't confuse you more. Uh, let's take all these ideas and, and, and let us renew our devotion uh, to the Blessed Virgin. Don't count the costs. Don't look for quick results. Just, just be to Mary. Just belong to the Blessed Virgin in these very trying times. Remember St. Louis de Montfort says, as, as the last days keep coming closer to us, he says the enemy will put out ever more subtle traps and snares to try to confuse us, try to um, break us loose try to, to, to bring us down in all ever so subtle, unprecedented ways. 
So the only way to avoid that is to love the Blessed Virgin.